Breathing, something we all tend to take for granted. But in the workplace, with the possibility of having to breathe in a contaminated atmosphere, it's vital to understand when and how to use a respirator. They are designed to ensure the air you breathe is safe. The composition of clean air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% of other gases. In a contaminated or oxygen-deficient atmosphere, a change in balance can affect the lung's ability to transfer the oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from the bloodstream. Quite simply, if you don't get enough oxygen or you inhale highly toxic air, you die. The effects of breathing in workplace contaminants can be either of an acute nature, having a devastating immediate result, or can be chronic, producing illness and disease over a medium to long term. Contaminants in the workplace atmosphere can vary from asbestos fibers to toxic solvents and fumigants in the form of dust, mist and fumes to non-solids such as gases and vapors. Dusts are solid particles suspended in the air after grinding, sanding or cutting. Dusts can also be stirred up by sweeping. Mists are tiny liquid droplets suspended in the air, as might happen when spray painting or aerating liquids. Fumes are fine particles that drift into the air when metals are heated, vaporized and cooled, perhaps by welding, soldering or grinding. Chromium and nickel fumes produced while welding stainless steel may lead to cancer. Gases are substances that are airborne at room temperature. And vapors are substances that evaporate from a liquid or solid at room temperature. Paint thinners, solvents, and gasoline vapors can damage internal organs like the heart and brain. Vapors and gases may be invisible hazards that go unnoticed. Colorless, tasteless, and odorless, like carbon monoxide. They may travel great distances in the workplace. You have to constantly be aware of the possibility of invisible respiratory hazards. Breathing in contaminants can coat your lungs and prevent your blood from picking up oxygen. Your nose, throat and lungs are literally being clogged up by these particles. Or contaminants can pass directly into your bloodstream and internal organs, resulting in potential illness. A respirator is a proactive device to make the air we breathe healthy and safe. In order to protect yourself, know what hazards you are facing. Determine the type, nature and concentration of the contaminants in the workplace atmosphere. A hazard assessment will aid in determining the type of respiratory protection required. The selection of the appropriate respirator is governed by five key factors. What is the contaminant or contaminants we are dealing with? What is the concentration level? What is the oxygen level? Any workplace atmosphere with low to no oxygen, rated as IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and or health, must be treated with the utmost caution and constantly monitored. What are the warning properties? And is there enough ventilation and circulation? Your employer will ensure atmospheric testing is performed when required to determine the concentration of airborne contaminants. Publish data, MSDS, and container label WIMIS information will dictate the respiratory protection required based on concentration and duration of exposure. Warning properties must be identified. Some contaminants have no warning properties. Watch for the potential of airborne oil. 
Oil lubricated air compressors and the presence of motor vehicles can often be the source. You may require a special cartridge filter. Workplace atmosphere conditions may change. Regularly assess to make certain that the proper respirator is being used. There are administrative and engineering decisions your employer may use to control airborne contaminants on the work site. Is there a way to eliminate the job task altogether? Is a fan for ventilation enough? Can work on an item be performed somewhere less hazardous and then transported back to the site? Should other work personnel be kept away from the site? Can a dangerous process involving airborne contaminants be isolated or contained? But in many cases, there is no choice other than to use personal protective equipment. Breathing is life. Your lungs must be protected. Your respiratory system keeps you alive. Use a respirator. Before choosing a respirator, some basic health issues have to be addressed. If there are pre-existing physical limitations, breathing or medical conditions, a worker may not be allowed to use respiratory protection. A respirator health screening form or similar documentation must be completed for each worker. If a worker has bronchitis or a recent case of pneumonia, they are required to tell their supervisor. Everyone has to be certain that the worker is healthy enough to use a respirator. There is a wide variety of respiratory protection available. There are two main categories, air purifying respirators, APRs, and supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, which includes self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBAs. An air purifying respirator draws air through a filter cartridge or canister to remove specific air contaminants. Air purifying respirators range from disposable dust and particulate mask for protection from dust and mist to half mask and full face piece reusable respirators for protection from heavier concentrations of air contaminants. Supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, including self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBAs, are used in atmospheres that are unknown, oxygen deficient, or highly toxic. APRs and SABAs should only be used by people who have been trained. We will be dealing with fit testing and the use of APRs and SABAs in other modules. A respirator that does not fit properly can be more dangerous than no respirator at all. It can lead to a false sense of security and can be fatal. <sighs> Maintenance of your respirator is an ongoing process. Check your air purifying respirator each time before you use it. Look for splits, cuts, cracks, stiffening, scratches, tears, or holes in the body of the mask. Check for broken, torn, or damaged head straps and buckles. Also, look for loss of strap elasticity. Damaged face pieces should be replaced. Check the exhalation and inhalation rubber valves to see if they are free of tears and cuts and not brittle to the touch. Check a full face respirator face window for distortion, dirt, dust, and detergent residue. Tell your supervisor of any damage. Check filtering components to see that the correct filters are being used. The filters have not passed their use-by date or service life. The filters are clearly labeled. There is no damage to the filter assembly and that the filters are correctly seated in the filter housing. Only use those filters and cartridges that are manufactured for that particular respirator. When removing a respirator, tilt your head forward to minimize the possibility of contaminated material caught in the upper ridge of your shield from falling into your face. You can sanitize your respirator by using appropriate wipes or the manufacturer's recommended disinfectant. Clean and disinfect 
daily. Wash in mild soap and warm water. Hot water, household cleaners, or solvents may damage rubber parts and the face piece. Rinse thoroughly in clean, warm water because detergents or cleaners that dry on the face piece may later cause skin irritation. Hand dry with a clean, lint-free cloth or air dry. Don't dry by artificial heating. It may change the shape of the mask, resulting in a poor face seal. Store your respirator in a plastic bag or container and place it in a safe place, like up on a shelf, in a locker, or carefully in a job box. Don't bury it away in a toolbox. It may get pressed out of shape. To rely on your respirator, you must maintain it properly. One day, it just may save your life. Use your respirator correctly and treat it with respect. Air purifying respirators, or APRs, remove the contaminants from the air as a person inhales. As the worker is reliant on the air in the immediate atmosphere, the oxygen content must be at normal levels, that is ranging from 19.5% to 21%. The work environment must not be IDLH. The hazard assessment performed by your supervisor and safety advisor will determine the type of air purifying respirator required. Disposable single-use quarter face piece type respirators may not offer as good a seal. So these masks must never be used in toxic environments because of contaminant leakage. Quarter and half mask respirators allow for additional eye and face protection, while full face respirators feature built-in face and eye protection. Half mask and full face respirators allow for a tight seal check between the respirator and the face. With a proper fit, there is minimal risk of contaminant leakage into the breathing mask. Air purifying respirators draw the air through a cartridge or filter. The hazard assessment will determine the type of cartridges and filters required. Replaceable filters remove specific contaminants only. Make certain you have the right cartridge or canister for your job requirements. Choosing the wrong cartridge may endanger your health. These filter devices are all labeled and color coded for easy identification. Some cartridges may also be stacked and used in combination when more than one contaminant is present. Ensure that both sides are changed together. There are two basic types of filters. Mechanical filters collect solid particles like dust, fumes, or mists. Chemical cartridges collect gases or vapors. As a mechanical filter fills up, it becomes clogged and harder to breathe through, a sure sign it needs replacing. Some have end-of-service life indicators to show when they are no longer safe to use. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations to check the lifespan of a filter or cartridge. There are also a number of physical danger signals that may indicate that the filter, cartridge or canister is no longer effective. These include, you can smell or taste contaminants. Your eyes, nose or throat become irritated it becomes difficult to breathe. The air you are breathing becomes uncomfortably warm or you feel nauseous and or dizzy. If you experience any of these symptoms, please leave the work area immediately and head for fresh air. Most chemical cartridges give no such warning. They soak up gas or vapor like a sponge and once full, allow the contaminant to pass right through. The moment you can smell or taste the gas or vapor, leave the area and change the cartridge. Some cartridges combine a mechanical particulate filter and a chemical filter that absorbs only a specific kind of gas or vapor. There are also powered air purifying respirators that make breathing easier and keep the face cool. 
A battery-powered fan draws air through the filter and then blows it into the face piece. Air pressure helps to keep contaminants from entering. But like other APRs, this device merely filters the existing atmosphere. It does not supply oxygen. Air purifying respirators work in many situations, but must not be used in IDLH environments. Some chemicals are deceptive. You may not smell them until the concentration greatly exceeds the safe limit. Remember, air purifying respirators should not be used when there is an oxygen deficiency. IDLH conditions exist. There is entry into an unventilated or confined space where the exposure conditions cannot and have not yet been determined. There may be unknown contaminants and or unknown concentration of these contaminants. Gases and vapors with poor warning properties are present. In places where the air has not been tested, you may not get a second chance. By the time you find that your respirator is inadequate, it could be too late. That's why, in extremely toxic atmospheres, the use of supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, is mandatory. <sighs> supplied air breathing apparatus, or SABAs, are used in atmospheres that are unknown, oxygen deficient, or highly toxic. Supplied air breathing apparatus are used when conditions are too dangerous or unpredictable for the filtering action of an air purifying respirator alone. The key point being that the supplied fresh air is independent from the air in the work area. It provides clean breathing air to the worker on site, usually from a compressor located in a clean environment. Airline respirators deliver an ample supply of clean air by means of a long hose. Since the flow of air can be interrupted if the hose is crimped or severed, airline respirators should not be used in IDLH atmospheres without an emergency escape bottle. And remember, an emergency pack must only be used for emergencies and never for performing short work tasks. Supplied air breathing apparatus can be fitted with a half mask, a full face piece, or in the case of abrasive blasting, a protective hood. Check all supply hoses, valves, and regulators before each use. All equipment should be operated and maintained according to the manufacturer's specifications. As well, it is the responsibility of each individual worker to check their PPE prior to use. Of course, it is extremely important to ensure that the air intake for the compressor or blower is well away from any source of contaminant. Supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, include airline respirators and self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBAs, and or combination airline SCBAs. Only self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBAs, or supplied air breathing apparatus, SABAs, with an emergency escape bottle right with the worker should be used in an IDLH environment where there is an oxygen deficient atmosphere, or when the conditions in an area are unknown. SABAs require specialized training. You must know emergency procedures. Seek help if you don't know how to use the respirator. Remember, breathing is life. With a supplied air breathing apparatus, or a self-contained breathing apparatus, you may only have one chance to get it wrong. Once it's determined what type of respirator you require, it's important to ensure that it fits properly. Both air purifying respirators and supplied air breathing apparatus must have an effective seal between the face and the face piece. Facial hair can interfere with the seal, allowing contaminants to enter and pass by the respirator. Beards are not allowed. 
mustaches only to the corner of the lip, and sideburns only to the earlobe. Being clean shaven is the key. Even a day's growth of stubble may interfere with a good seal. Likewise, face and body piercing jewelry must be carefully assessed and possibly removed. Facial scars, dentures, wrinkles, and eyeglasses can also affect the seal with certain respirators. Prescription eyeglasses cannot be worn with a full face piece respirator as the arms of the eyeglasses will break the seal. Alternatives include eyeglass inserts or contacts. Some airborne contaminants are extremely toxic, and if a break in the seal occurs, it could potentially kill you. <sighs> fit tests are designed to ensure a good seal. Negative and positive fit tests, called user seal checks, must always be performed before using the respirator in a contaminated area. A negative pressure test can quickly indicate a problem. Place the palm of each hand over the cartridge assemblies or inhalation points and inhale. The face piece should collapse slightly as one breathes in and no inward rush of air should be felt against the face. You can also do a positive pressure test. Place the palm of your hand over the exhalation valve and press lightly while exhaling gently into the face piece. If no air escapes around the edges of the respirator, the fit is satisfactory. If leaks are detected, the respirator should be readjusted and the user seal checks should be repeated. A fit test must be performed when the respirator is first issued to the worker, if workplace conditions change, and if the worker's facial features change, perhaps due to an injury or change in weight. The fit test is quite simple and only takes about three to five minutes, beginning with a screening of the worker's sensitivity to the test agent. By law, in most jurisdictions, a fit test must be conducted at least once every two years. It is recommended, however, the test be performed yearly and certainly whenever a new maker model of respirator is to be worn. The qualitative fit test is to see if a worker can detect the presence of a particular test agent. Qualitative tests rely on the user's sense of smell and or taste, their olfactory nerve. One qualitative fit testing agent is stannic chloride and irritant smoke. A variety of other test agents may be used. The respirator is then fitted with the correct particulate filter or cartridge. The worker dons the respirator and conducts the user seal checks. If the test is for quarter or half piece masks using stannic chloride, the instructor following the test kit instructions asks the worker to shut their eyes and keep them closed, otherwise their eyes may become irritated and invalidate the test. The instructor now releases the test agent in and around the respirator as the worker performs seven basic simulated workplace activities. They are normal breathing, deep breathing, side to side head movement, nodding up and down, Three, talking, four, reading, or five, counting, six, bending over, and again normal breathing. With a proper fitting respirator, the odor should not be detected by the worker. The face piece is adjusted until a satisfactory fit can be achieved. In some cases, a different size, model, or brand of respirator may be needed. You want to be comfortable, but above all, safe. Some airborne contaminants are extremely toxic, and if a break in the seal occurs, it can kill you. No respirator is right for every person or situation. Your employer will provide the proper respirator to ensure a good fit. Following the test, it is most important to make sure the correct cartridges are fitted before entering the contaminated work area. 
Remember, each time you don the respirator to enter a contaminated atmosphere, a positive and negative pressure test must be performed. Quantitative fit testing uses computerized measuring instruments to read the amount of test agent that is penetrating the face seal. Quantitative testing is used when a worker's sense of smell and or taste is below the norm or as required by the job hazards. Remember, whether using qualitative or quantitative fit testing, never forget the importance of a proper fit to your health.